Hello and welcome to another analysis behind the news where we provide the perspective that you can use to help save American liberty and independence. So with all the news coverage of the election as well as the caravan, you know, it's easy to miss news regarding negotiations that are happening in world trade. Actually, if you were to follow it closely, you'd probably be bored out of your skull. Yet, from a standpoint of affecting you long term, globalists are hoping you ignore this type of news as trade agreements are among the most important tools to them for implementing their New World Order agenda. With the proper amount of context, what would normally bore most folks, this news should have Americans standing at attention and acting to save their country. So, on that note, let's move forward. Over the weekend, the Japan Times reported that there are 16 mostly Asian countries who are currently negotiating what will be the world's largest free trade area. They may not be able to achieve their target of a substantive deal by the year's end. So even though this trade pact has been under negotiation since 2013, it's been under the radar of most of the American media. Except for, of course, our own New American magazine. The pact is called the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, or RCEP for short. In April of this year, the New American reported online that the RCEP and the Trans-Pacific Partnership were two agreements that would make up the foundation for a larger agreement called the Free Trade Area of the Asia-Pacific, or FTAAP. Now, at this point, you might be asking yourself, why should I care about all these alphabet soup agreements? Especially since President Trump pulled us out of the TPP. Well, hang in there, because this is where it gets very interesting. In that same New American article, it reads, TT TPP proponents know that a large American constituency is already very alarmed over the outsourcing of jobs and industry to China and the huge inroads that China is making into the American economy, especially in light of President Trump's recent announcement of placing tariffs on Chinese goods. So, TPP advocates are telling this concerned audience that the TPP, which at present does not include China, will give American workers and companies a big new advantage against competition from China. In fact, this has been the same deceptive narrative of, TT, of TPP advocates since President Obama and his administration were negotiating the agreement. However, these same TPP proponents we're also telling other audiences that China will probably be admitted into the TPP and that, at any rate, the final game plan is to have the TPP subsumed into the larger planned free trade area of the Asia Pacific, which will include not only communist China, but Russia as well. As we will show below, the architects of the TPP have planned from the beginning to include China and openly acknowledge that the TPP is merely a stepping stone, which is their words, to U.S.-China convergence in the larger FTAAP. Now, back to the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Even though President Trump did pull us out of it, Globalists within the Trump administration, including Secretary of Commerce Wilbur Ross, has said that the door is not entirely closed on America being part of that agreement. In fact, you may recall back in April that President Trump requested exploring options to getting back into the TPP before he walked back those comments. So, three weeks ago, Modern Diplomacy reported online that the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership would integrate the three largest economies of Asia, China, Japan, and India. Knowing what we do about these agreements, economic integration is merely the first step of creating a regional government union. 
Step two is political integration. Now, as the article points out, once this goes through, this will be the first time that India has been integrated in with the global economy. They have thus far managed to stay independent to a certain degree. So, for the U.S. to get entangled into this Asian regional integration scheme, it would take America signing on to the TPP, the RCEP, or the FTAAP. While that may be unlikely at this point, these regionalization packs could certainly be opened for larger inclusion. For instance, if the U.S. signs on to the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership, which is the TTIP, to integrate with the EU, how long would it be before that agreement would be open to the signatories of the FTAAP? Now remember, globalist supporters of these agreements will use China as an excuse to get entangled into the agreement in order to combat China's global trade dominance. Yet, these same supporters will tell you that it would be in China's best interest to join the pack somewhere down the line. So the signatories can obviously take advantage of the opportunities of opening up China's fast markets. And all the while doing so, countries get entangled into a web that integrates them into regional partnerships and then larger unions until they are under the governance of a world body like the United Nations where the UN would hold great power, easily enforcing its dictates and stripping entirely the domestic governing structure of each once independent country. And this is why you should care about these alphabet soup agreements. Now, does that sound a little too fantastic? Well, keep an eye on the European Union. Study the process of how it came to be and then project the lines of where it's going, and you will then soon see the possibilities of what these entangling alliances hold for the U.S. Now, to learn more about this, visit our Choose Freedom, Stop the Free Trade Agenda at jbs.org. Now, we at the John Birch Society have been fighting against these globalist plans by exposing them for six decades. We organize, we plan, and we act. If you're sick of politics as usual and are interested in a long-term solution that protects American independence and liberty, then we ask that you apply for membership today. And also, don't forget about our book giveaway that we discussed last week. Enter today by clicking on the link in the video description. And as always, please be sure to like and share this video with family and friends. And until next time, We'll see you then.